Today's episode is a very specific scenario that's going to have rare applications. Uh, greetings, party enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is TGOS 3D. Today's episode, we are going to talk about uh, multiple processes in Simplify 3D that are run as individual prints with a raft. Even though my maker coin says uh, from failure knowledge, and I do embrace that, I am susceptible to some frustrations uh, with failures. Um, in December, I was lucky enough to have a lot of demand for my uh, salsa dancer ornament. It's just a quick little multicolor print. I was trying to rebuild stock one evening, and I had a series of first layer fails in a row. And I did get frustrated. And at one point, I was so frustrated, I was like, ah, maybe I just do a raft and get it over with. And then I realized that was going to be a little complicated because of the way I do the print with the multiple processes as separate individual prints. In the case of that salsa dancer ornament, uh, my first layer problems were solved with a little bit of magic you. Um, but I was intrigued enough by the the scenario of like how would I do multiple processes with a raft that uh, once I rebuilt my stock I looped back and did another one with a raft. Uh, first off I'm in Simplify 3D I am using um, version 4.12 and uh, this is my salsa dancer ornament and you can see that it has raised areas and that's for the different color changes so typically uh, what I do is I run my first print, uh, which is just uh, gray, and it stops to, at a point where I'm going to insert in a split ring. Uh, then I run a second uh, process of gray, which is going to seal in that split ring and you know finalize the look of the gray section of my ornament. Uh, then I follow up with just a little bit of red, and then I follow up with a process of black. Now, in Simplify 3D, when you are doing multiple processes, if you do include a raft, um, when you run them all together, Simplify 3D is aware of the raft and it accommodates. Everything moves up. But in the situation where you run these processes separately, independently, um, the first process that you run, it's going to remember that you have the raft there and it's going to show it. And let's try to get a little landmark here. Um, so you can see what's going on. So we'll use our little ooze shield here in the feature type legend kind of as a landmark. When I come to that second process, it doesn't know that I have a raft. It doesn't think about that. And so if you recall, my first process, it printed all the way up here to the ooze shield layer of my uh, legend. And here, when it's starting my second process, it's starting below where my first process finished. And so your nozzle is going to be grinding into this existing material that is already there. It's not going to be good, and it's not going to sound good either. So ultimately, what I want to do is I want to raise up my additional processes um, to uh, you know, accommodate where that raft is so that they're not printing over something that already exists. And just a quick heads up, it's not a hack to go to your second, your subsequent processes and also include a raft. Uh, Simplify 3D is smart enough to know that it's not going to be printing a raft in midair, so it's going to do the same thing where it just it skips a raft in that subsequent process and it's going to be printing over the same height. So the first thing that I want to do is figure out uh, what I'm up against, how big is that raft. And the way I did that was I just went ahead and sliced my first process. And I went ahead and exported it, uh, the G code to my file. And now I can go to that G code file, which is just a text file, and I can open up in Notepad. And I have two choices right now. Um, the first thing that I can do is look at my layer preview in Simplify 3D. So I can just do, 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 and find out where is it actually starting my object. And it's going to start on layer 6. So one option that I could do in here is do a search for layer 6. And I could come here and see, oh, this is the Z height. Another thing that I can do is Simplify 3D does comment its codes with uh, feature types. 
And what I could do is just search for the first feature that's after a raft that's not a skirt or whatnot. And so here you can see, oh, I'm going to do feature inner perimeter. And uh, there's my, my Z height that I want. Um, the reason I'm not telling you to specifically search for inner perimeter is this could um, vary depending on your Simplify 3D settings. So in my case over here, uh, under layer, I am doing my outline direction from the inside out. So uh, my print is gonna be starting the inner perimeter first, but if you are doing outside in, uh, it might be doing the outside perimeter first. So back over here, I see my Z height and I might think, oh, okay, there's my answer, 1.693. That's not the answer. And here's why. Uh, think about when your print starts. Uh, when it first starts, uh, even though you're doing your very, very, very first layer, the Z height of the nozzle is not right there on the bed. It's a little off the bed. The same is happening for your layers. Uh, when you are printing a new layer, your nozzle is not at the bottom of the layer. It's at the top of the layer. And so we will go back and take a look at my um, Simplify 3D settings, and I'm printing in 0.25 millimeter layer height. And so we could do a little bit of quick math, and uh, hopping back over to my G-code, uh, 1.693. I noticed in Simplify 3D, they just go to two decimal points. So we'll think about this 1.693 as just 1.69. And so, do just a quick little baby math. All right, so we're going to take that uh, 1.693 where our nozzle is at and subtract our 0 0.25 layer height. And doing math in front of people, 6 minus 2 is 4, 9 minus 5 is 4. Uh, we have 1.44, and that is going to be the height of our raft. So coming back here in Simplify 3D, I've already sliced my first process, and now I want to go ahead and raise this object up um, to accommodate where the raft is. Uh, I double click on it to get my little properties tab over here, and you may have worked with it before to uh, resize some things or change the rotation of something. Uh, today I'm going to be working with the Z offset. A lot of times you're going to see that already set to zero, um, but basically all I have to do is where my Z offset is now, whatever it is, I'm going to add my 1.44, the height that I determined the raft is, uh, to it. And luckily this is easy math. 2 plus 1.44 is 3.44. And this raises it up off the bed. I'm not done yet because all of my subsequent processes, they have starting and ending times set up in Simplify 3D, and I also need to adjust those starting and end times. Ah, this one's going to be a little bit harder. So I want to go ahead and add that same 1.44 to everything. Okay, this part's going to be easy. 4 plus 1.44 is 5.44. Um, two, three, the four. Uh. All right, and in this case, I can cheat a little bit because my starting height for my next process is gonna be my ending height of this process. So that's okay. Go back over here. And paste that in. And then I'm um, lucky here, I know that this particular process is only printing uh, for three-tenths of a millimeter. So I can just simply add the three-tenths there. And this ending height is going to be the starting height of my next process. And this one's just going to go to the end. Let's do some little checks here. Do all of these together. The, All right, so let's go ahead and slice these. Okay, now at this point, if I wanna do a little bit of spot checking, uh, what I can do is um, open up all of these in Notepad and just paste them all together into one file uh, just to, as a spot check, this is completely, completely optional. So I'll start naming this as my spot check. So let's 
just go ahead and open this one. I'm Control A for copying every or highlighting everything, and Control C. Go back to my spot check and paste that in. And now you can actually open up G code files into Simplify 3D. And here it is, it opened up in Simplify 3D. And one thing I'd particularly be checking is that there's not an excessive gap um, between um, my first process and my second process. Uh, a lot of times there is going to be a little tiny gap here because your first layer is usually a smaller percentage, it's not 100% uh, layer height. And so there's sometimes variations of where your starting and ending heights are going to be. The other thing I would be checking for is just watching the layers layer by layer and making sure that it keeps going up sequentially and you don't see it jump back and repeat and print, try to print where there's material already. So this section looks good. Uh, as just an illustration, here's one that I sliced where I did not make the raft adjustments. And as you go up, you can see, you know, it finishes up my first process and then it goes back, you see right there, it started right back down there, and if you watch the split ring, you can see it continue its efforts to print where it's already printed. And there you have it. That's how I sliced it, and I ran those uh, four processes, and then I got a salsa dancer ornament printed with Simplify 3D multiple processes with a raft. Well, hopefully this obscure scenario will help someone out there. Uh, either way, thank you for watching and have a great day.